coronavirus vaccine. First we know about what is a vaccine. A vaccine is a biological preparation that provides active acquired immunity to a particular infectious disease. A vaccine typically contains an agent that resembles a disease-causing microorganism and is often made from weakened or killed forms of the microbe, its toxins, or one of its surface proteins. The agent stimulates the body's immune system to recognize the agent as a threat, destroy it, and to further recognize and destroy any of the microorganisms associated with that agent that it may encounter in the future. There are different types. So let's look at how vaccines are made. So vaccines are made either by weakening the organism. So in this context, we need to remember the word attenuation, whereby the organism loses its pathogenicity, however, does retain its antigenicity. Second thing is by inactivating the organism. In other words, by killing the organism. So there is no question of pathogenicity here. However, antigenic properties will still be retained. The third way by which vaccines can be prepared is by inactivating a toxin. So toxin is nothing but a poison which is prepared from the bacteria. So by inactivating this toxin, we can produce what we call as a toxoid. And this toxoid can provide protection against this toxin if the person is exposed to the toxin in future. And lastly, which is very commonly used these days is using a part of the virus or the bacterium. So using a part of the cell wall or the capsule of the microorganism to produce a vaccine. These are the techniques by which vaccines can be prepared. On the basis of these methods of preparation of vaccines, we have different types. So the types here are live attenuated vaccines, whereby we weaken the organism, inactivated or killed vaccines, wherein the organism is killed. Please remember, both in the live attenuated and the inactivated variety, the antigenic properties are still retained. Third variety is toxoids, when we inactivate the toxin produced by the bacterium or virus. Point to remember here is, toxoids are effective only against toxin produced by the bacterium or the virus and not against the organism itself. The third variety is polysaccharide and polypeptide or cellular fraction vaccines whereby I mentioned that use of part of the organism. So either the capsule or the cell wall can result in different types of vaccines like this. And the last variety is surface antigen or recombinant vaccines wherein we just take the antigen from the organism, not the whole organism or not a part of the organism, just the antigen. And then we make it into a recombinant variety in order to produce a vaccine. When a pathogen, a virus or a bacterium is introduced into the body, it multiplies and attacks cells. This is known as an infection. Recognizing this microbe as a foreign body, the immune system deploys two defense strategies using various types of white blood cells. First of all is the innate immune response. Macrophage are at the heart of this. These killer cells swallow up intruders, whatever they are, to destroy them. Phagocytes capture and eliminate toxins. This rapid and localized reaction can stop or slow down the infection. But that's not always enough, and that's where lymphocytes come in. They're defender cells which can identify the invader thanks to its characteristic molecule, the antigen. Each lymphocyte is adapted to attack a particular virus or bacteria. As soon as it identifies the antigen, the lymphocyte multiplies. B lymphocytes have the capacity to produce vast numbers of antibodies. Circulating around the body, antibodies latch onto these antigens and neutralize them, allowing macrophage to eliminate them. T lymphocytes identify and destroy infected cells. The problem is that on first contact with an antigen, the immune reaction is slow, taking several days, giving germs time to unleash an illness. Fortunately, the body remembers its enemies. Following an infection, antibodies and lymphocytes are left with a memory. They therefore react if the same pathogen reappears. The immune reaction is much faster and the body eliminates the attacker before the illness develops. Vaccines work by exploiting the immune system's memory. Vaccinations. Immune response. How vaccines work.
hemagglutinin and antigen on their surface in combination with a specific receptor known as the major histocompatibility complex or MHC. T cells are now able to recognize and bind foreign antigens that are associated with the MHC. Upon binding to the MHC receptor, T cells become activated and proliferate into either cytotoxic T cells, regulatory suppressor T cells, or helper T cells. Activated helper T cells express hemagglutinin receptors specific to the vaccine strand on their surface and play a major role in antibody generation and memory B cell activation. Unlike T cells, B cells are able to ingest hemagglutinin independent of the MHC. Once internalized, B cells process the hemagglutinin antigen and present it on their surface in combination with an MHC. When activated helper T cells interact with activated B cells expressing antigen MHC receptors, they begin secreting lymphokines which have several effects. Lymphokines trigger activated B cell proliferation which leads to either their differentiation into memory B cells or into plasma cells. Plasma cells produce hemagglutinin antibodies specific to the strain of influenza contained in the vaccine. Memory B cells aid in future immune response when exposed to an active influenza virus. Coronavirus vaccine. The target? A spiky protein that covers the new coronavirus. That protein lets the virus invade human cells. If the body's immune system recognizes the spike and blocks it, people won't get infected. One way is to copy a section of the virus's genetic code that instructs cells to make the spike protein. Stick that messenger RNA into a vaccine. The person's own cells will make the harmless protein. Then the immune system will spot the foreign proteins and make antibodies to attack them. Another method is called a DNA vaccine. Genetic code for the spike protein is put into what's called a plasmid, a circular piece of synthetic DNA and used as a vaccine. Both approaches prime the immune system to attack again if the real virus ever comes along. Whatever type of vaccine ultimately works, it likely will be 12 to 18 months before it's ready for widespread use. Biotech and Academia collaborate on intranasal COVID-19 vaccine development. Hyderabad-based biotech company is working on developing a nasal vaccine for COVID-19. An international collaboration of virologists at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and the vaccine companies Flugin along with Bharat Biotech has begun the development and testing of a vaccine against COVID-19 called Coroflu. Coroflu will build on the backbone of Flugin's flu vaccine candidate known as M2SR, which is a self-limiting version of the influenza virus that induces an immune response against the flu. The virologists will insert gene sequences from SARS-CoV-2, the novel coronavirus that causes the disease COVID-19, into M2SR so that the new vaccine will also induce immunity against the novel coronavirus. To be continued. Do check out my video and subscribe to my channel, I would like to hear your feedback. Give support to me by subscribe my YouTube channel.